Welcome to this latest episode of Inside Oriel in association with our main sponsors, Bet Regal. I'm um, delighted to say that I'm joined on the sofa for the first time by Louis. Is it Louis Ainsley or Louis Ansley? Louis Ansley. Louis but, Ansley. Yeah, I'm not too fussy on the pronunciation, yeah. but yeah, Ansley. I get a lot of, yeah. Ainsley and all that stuff, but yeah, Ainsley. Yeah, there we go from the horses, mate. I had to do the same with Johannes a couple of weeks ago. Just <laughs> uh, to make sure. a bit more tough, isn't it? Yeah, just a, just a uh, slight bit. Um, we're recording this game um, ahead of our fixture with Cork City at Oriel Park on Friday night. It's Cork's first visit to Oriel Park since March 2020. If you remember, it was our last home game before the dreaded pandemic hit. Um, so it's Cork's first visit to Oriel in three years. Tickets are now on sale for that game on the club website. And um, we're obviously coming off the back of three straight wins and two clean sheets. You've been on the sidelines, unfortunately. What what have you made of it looking on from the stand? Yeah, obviously buzzing. I think yeah. we're all buzzing. I think the, the vibe around the place at the minute is buzzing. Obviously, like you said, we had a little bit of adversity with a, with a few losses, I think, and draws. And then, you know, three on the bounce now. That's five unbeaten. And I think it puts us in good stead for Friday night. And I think yeah. everyone is, yeah, we're all in good vibes. Even when it was going against us, you know, we still believe that this is our season. So, yeah, looking forward to another game. Are you a good watcher of games from the, the stand? Or are you very sort of impatient, very, you know, when you, when you can't do anything about it, is it, is it a hard, hard watching on? Yeah, it's obviously tough watching on. But obviously, you're just supporting the boys and just, yeah, I'd probably say I'm like a, a fidgety watcher. I wouldn't want to sit next to me if right, I was okay. on the other end of it. Just because I'm loud, I like commentate on the game, basically. Right, okay. So, yeah, you may as well get me in the commentary if you want. For <laughs> there we are, LOA TV, this <laughs> Friday, featuring Louis Hansley. The, the win in Sligo, we wore the blue kit. What did you make of it? Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. And even better with a win. I think that's away and third kit now. That's it, yeah, we wore the, red, the, home, uh, the away, sorry, the red and black yeah. against UCD and the blue against Sligo, mm. we won. We're, we're going to give a third kit, one of the new third jerseys away at the end of the show. Louis's been racking his brain for a question. Have you come up with one? Yeah, I have actually, yeah. It's one that you can search up, so hopefully it's easy enough. Okay. Uh, we'll go with, who did I score my one and only international goal against? There we go. We're going to give it away at the start. At the end of the show, we're giving it away now at the start of the show. So that's the question. Leave your, leave your answer in the comment section below and we'll announce a winner um, next week. Um, say you've missed, you've been looking there, you've been missing since the start of March. Um, it's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, actually, do you know, I was I was saying this to a few of the boys earlier. It feels like yesterday I played against Pats. Yeah, yeah. As in, it don't feel that long ago. But yeah, when you say beginning of March, it's almost coming up to, going to be three months, obviously, soon. So, yeah. Tell us about it. So, obviously, you mentioned we played Pats. We win 5-0. You mm. score a goal. You picked the music, I think, that night as well. Mm. Good, good, decent, mm. decent tunes before. Yeah, I was happy with myself. Yeah, probably probably top of the world. We're playing, due to play Shelburne on the, the yeah. Monday. So what was it? You come in for recovery on the Saturday and you, you tell us what, what yeah, that Yeah, so had. played Friday night, felt fine. Came in Saturday, felt fine. Went home Saturday evening and just had a little twinge in my groin, hip area. Thought nothing of it. Then it got to the night and just, yeah, basically struggling, like really struggling. Couldn't sleep. Um, just every time I moved, it was like painful around there. Came in Monday and was in a really bad way. So Danny, obviously... Uh, done brilliantly to be fair so, uh, took me up to the hospital in Dublin and got my bloods done and yeah it turned out that I had sepsis which obviously isn't great and it had travelled to my muscle and groin which has obviously been why I've been out for the length of time I have What were you thinking? What was going through your head? Obviously yeah then I was in the hospital for three weeks so the first week it was more like a bit of a blur because obviously I was on a lot of um, antibiotics and trying to find out what it was, how it got in Um so yeah, I weren't thinking too much about it there and then. But then yeah, as I was getting a lot better, I started to think, God, like, yeah. Mm. Obviously this has hit me hard and yeah, I couldn't walk obviously for two, three weeks. So it was tough, yeah, really tough. But I got my head around it pretty quickly. Obviously everyone here has been really supportive and all the messages I got, I was really grateful for. So yeah, really it was uh, annoying and it still has been a bit of an annoying spell, but I'm just happy to obviously be on the mend now. What can you... Can you pinpointed to is is there anything you can you can look back and say it was that or it was a cut here or was it was no. it a cut or what 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 no. what exactly yeah. set it off so it was a it's an infection called staphylococcus up so not yeah right, okay. something like that yeah I'm google not out sure. there yeah. in your home. <laughs> <laughs> um and that obviously got into my bloodstream they actually don't know we don't know how yeah um but however it did yeah uh 
Yeah, it went, went really bad. Went travelled to my groin. Not sure if it was a weak area, and it's travelled there. Then went into my bone. So yeah, it was yeah, it was a really weird one, like you said there. I don't really know how. When there was a few things we watched back that the game against Pats and I fell, but it, you know it's a very subjective, and they didn't know the hospital either. So yeah, that's a little bit worrying, but yeah. What can you do just on the men now, yeah. hopefully? Three weeks in the, the hermitage, was it in Dublin, yeah, the hermitage yeah. hospital? That's that's some way to start your life in a new country is three mm. weeks in a in a in a in a, in a hospital. You you you've obviously no family over here, I think your your girlfriend and your, your mm. parents might have come over, but you've you've obviously you're in a different country. Yeah. What yeah. what what was that like? Yeah, like you said, then obviously my girlfriend came over a few times, so mm. and my mum came over, so but yeah, mostly it was just my girlfriend obviously travelling up from Neary to Dublin every yeah. night, so Fair play to her, you know, some shift. Um, and a few of the lads came and visited me, Gaffer, Danny. So, you know, I had all the support there, to be fair. And obviously, I didn't really think about being away from home at that time. Yeah. But yeah, when you say it, yeah, it's quite obviously tough. But I suppose it's life, isn't it? And there's always people in worse situations. That's, that's actually what my missus said to me, that, you know, as bad as it is, yeah, there's always someone worse off. And I yeah, completely agree, really. Yeah. After the game and draw, the, the, we won We won the Derby game up and draw. I think the lads put some FaceTime in the dressing room, which was, yeah, yeah. Which was a nice touch. Yeah, the fellas next to me weren't too happy. They were trying to get a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hayden FaceTime me, to be fair. He was... Uh, yeah, no. Like I said before at the beginning, we've got a good, good set of lads here. Yeah. Um, all in it for the same thing. And obviously, yeah, that just got my my positivity up, really. Obviously, I was sitting there, like, just watch the game, buzzing for the boys, and then get that FaceTime. It was, yeah, really nice. Yeah. I think when you come back in the first day... Like, I think I was, I was a bit shocked when I seen you because you were you're on crutches and you're really mm. walking slow. It really mm. it really knocked you, didn't it? Yeah, no, it took it out of me. Just as I said, like my whole left leg would have like spasms through it, um, like mostly in the groin hip area, which just meant like walking was just a no go. And even now, like my right leg obviously struggles because it's had a lot of weight on it. But mm. you know, I'm back running now, um, back fit. But yeah, it did take it out of me. As in walking was no go. I was on crutches for a few days after. Um, but while I was in the hospital, yeah, there was no real walk. Like, didn't really have to walk. I was on a wheelchair. So, yeah, yeah, it was tough. But, yeah, we're back now, hopefully. Yeah. It must have been, it must have been, it must be difficult because it's not a, it's not a calf strain or it's not a hamstring or it's not a, yeah. you know, a, an injury you pick up. So you, you probably can't put a time frame on it when it when it happens. But I think anybody who's been at our recent games, if they're in the ground area, probably would have seen you doing a bit of a fitness work. So you're, you're well on the, the road to recovery now. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, like you said there, it's difficult even when I came back in to put a real time frame on it just because it's more of an illness than an injury. Um, but yeah, as you said, I'm starting to ramp up now. I'm starting to get back in with the boys, hopefully. So yeah, all looking good, all positive at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to your, your beginnings. Born in London. Yeah. Another London. another another London. You, you just want to clarify something. Well, Alfie Lewis has been wrongly... Wrongly credited with being a Londoner. Do you want to clarify that for us, Louis? Yeah, obviously, Alfie. Uh, I hope you watch this. Uh, <laughs> you're from South End, Leon C, to be specific. But he'll give it the old East London shout. But apparently, that's where his mum and dad are from, which is good. But he was born in Leon C, so yeah. He's out from of South all, End, out really. of all the lads in fairness, he's probably the most. I'd say he's probably the most London. So he there you probably go. He puts on a good act. <laughs> his accent is good, isn't it? Yeah. The fake East it London. Is. It is really good. Really good. Um, Chelsea and Wimbledon. The academies there, is, is, that, is that right? You'd spell the yeah, yeah, academies? Just, yeah, when I was younger. Yeah, I had a little spells. Not too long, but yeah, I was there for a little bit. Who did you support growing up? Uh, Southampton. Oh, very good. Mm. Not at the minute. Though. No, no, I was going to say, yeah, I don't oh, really want to talk about it last, last night. Yeah. How did that come away? Just, yeah, just a few family members support Southampton. So, just, uh, it just happened really. And then just started just going to the games when we were in League One, Championship. Then got to see us play in the European Qualifier. And then now we're back to the championship, but <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> Who would you have been looking at in the Sanab team when you were growing up thinking? I used to like a player called Jose Fonte, mm -hmm. Portuguese, obviously yeah. won League One now in France. At, yeah, I don't know how old he is now, but yeah, good player. Yeah, yeah. Liked him. Say so we're recording this the morning after the defeat the Forest. <laughs> yeah, don't want to talk about it. Yeah. It was actually a good game of football, though, to watch, to be Good fair. game for the neutral, not yeah. for, yeah. for Southampton fans. Yeah. Non league, is it Cobham? Cobham? Yeah. If we were if, in Ireland, you'd say that as Covham. Covham? Yeah. Cove Ramblers. Where's the V? C O, yeah, C O B, yeah. C O B is V. Yeah, Cove, yeah. So, 
you'd, you'd be calling them cob ramblers. <laughs> so if we get them, if we draw cob ramblers in the cup, Cove Ramblers, mm. non-league Cobham, so 10 appearances there. I was looking, you must have been only 16, were you? Yeah, yeah. So obviously I came out of, in fact, I wasn't really playing football seriously then. I was playing more like Sunday league. Right, okay. Um, just with friends and stuff. And then, but then I also, at that age, was the age where I started thinking, well, I want to do this as a okay. profession and stuff. So a family friend sent me to Cobham on, yeah, and I played yeah, 10 games, didn't know that. I thought it was really quick. And then I signed at Barnet after that from there. Right, okay. Um, just due to the men's experience, obviously. So, yeah, it was a good club. That really must have been a that must have been a, a baptism of fire playing as a 16-year-old. Yeah. I think it was is the South Eastern Combine League. Or yeah, so it's, yeah, so like, uh, yeah, it's non-league in England. Yeah, it's real, yeah. <laughs> I actually played left-back when I was there. We played left-back because obviously, like you said, this real football is in. It was long ball, direct, physical. Yeah. And I was a 16-year-old boy. I was slimmer than I am now. Uh, never really played this style of football. Right, okay. So they kind of shifted me out to the left-back position and just said, because I had a good left foot when I was younger. Not sure about it anymore. Um, so they uh, shift, shifted me out there. And yeah, I enjoyed it, to be fair. Yeah, I, yeah, I forget how... It, uh, 10 games sounds a lot because I felt like it was only there three weeks, four yeah. weeks. But yeah, really good club. And you see you moved to Barnet after that. Is that when you started thinking, geez, I could make, I could make yeah. a career out of this? Because mm, I had trials at loads of places, like maybe six, seven clubs, like from the Championship, right, League okay. One, Premier League, um, that all were no. So yeah, I mean, to be fair to myself, I've I've grinded through all the, the negativity and no's. And, and uh, obviously then I got my chance at Barnet and then went on to Lincoln and Blackburn. Yeah. So. What's that like as a kid, Louis? Because everybody, like, we're, we're here talking to you now because mm. you're a, you've made it and you're, you're a professional. But what's that like as a kid when you, you're told no? You know, and, and if it happens a couple of times, yeah. you start thinking, you mm. know, the game's up here. I'm not. I'm... Yeah, me and my mum were talking about it on the weekend. Just, I always used to be like quite, what's the word, reactional, is it? Where when it got, when I got told no, I used to say, right, I don't want to, I don't want to do another yeah. trial. Because I used to have like a trial and then when I'd play on the trial, then another trial, would, that's how it would almost work sometimes. And he said, I don't want to go on trial there. But then give myself two hours and I'd be back on the horse saying, All right, I've, got yeah. get, I've got to get this deal because, you know, a lot of people worked hard for me. I've worked hard to, to get to where I was. And it was always my goal, really, to sign professional, play professional football. So, you know, a lot of my family members, granddad worked really hard driving you everywhere throughout the country, really. So it was one of those where... I almost had to do it. It wasn't really yeah. an option. Yeah. What do you think you would have done? If I didn't play football, yeah, what would I be? Or anything? Was that an option? Or... Yeah, yeah. I actually did um, A-levels, which is... So I studied until I was 17. Right, okay. Um, Wardy seems to think I would have been a lawyer. I think it's because of the hair. He says, I have lawyer hair. I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> um, That's just a typical Wardy thing yeah. to say, isn't it? Yeah. You do actually come to think. You probably really... I can picture you at the, I can picture you at the courthouse and the block <laughs> here on a Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, pulling uh... the suitcase of... A papers behind you. <laughs> uh, what would I do? It's a really good question. Do you know what? I'd actually, this might sound cringy, but I'd actually probably be a, a gaffer. I'd go, really? into, uh, I'd go into coaching, maybe coaching, and then get my badges and go in to be a gaffer. That's really what I want to do after I finish playing as well. So that's what I'd probably aim to do. It would be in football, though, whatever I did. I well, you know one thing's for sure, Wardy never be a lawyer. <laughs> or no a gaffer, maybe. No, no chance of that. <laughs> Lincoln Red Imps, you moved yeah. moved there. So obviously there's a tie in with Gibraltar there. We we talked about your international mm. career, but how does it, how did you, how do you play, how are you playing international football with Gibraltar? Where's the family connection there? Uh, so my grandparents are okay. Gibraltarian. Um, Gibraltarian, that's Gibraltarian, that's how it said. Yeah, good. yeah, you get a lot of people Dribble tees. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> sixteen, I went over and played my first tournament for the under sixteens, and then yeah. played under seventeens, under nineteens, and then had a couple camps with the twenty ones. And my first senior call up was at seventeen, so yeah, it was quick. Um, but yeah, really enjoy obviously going away there. So there was no problem. Lincoln Red Imps come in. You were yeah. Uh, I know. I know the country. I know you're obviously a part of the underage mm. setup. Was that what? 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 Where did you look at that as an opportunity? Just FRC obviously football. Yeah, like you said there. So obviously I'd finished at Barnet. Um, I got offered something there, but I knew how it worked in England with the the structure that I'd go into like a twenty threes mm. or a B team somewhere. And have to work your way up. So I looked at that opportunity and, you know, obviously grateful for them for the year I had there. But it was more just, like you said, just wanting to get first team football really young. Because I saw the py like the pyramid, how they worked, is mm. that if you play first team football early enough, you, you get moves elsewhere. Yeah. So that was the plan, really. Um, it probably didn't go to plan, actually, how I would have wanted it to. But You still ended up at Blackburn. Still ended up at Blackburn. <laughs> lucky, so yeah, lucky it enough. It didn't go too bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But... 
How was Blackburn? Massive club, obviously, won the league mm. in 95. You know, what was it like mm. sort of signing for them? No, I'll tell a funny story with this, and I probably said it to Hayden and stuff. So I came back, I flew back from from Lincoln Redimps and I flew to Manchester and we got, we got my mum picked me up and we went to Blackburn and we were sitting in the like cafe area of whatever you want to call it. And uh, the agent who brought me over, he sat me down and said, oh, they've got six centre-halves here. They said, yeah, they're all 20, 21, 19. He said, this one is just a week of training. We're going to take you Hamburg next week. I said, <laughs> I said to my mum, I've just got a flight, travelled from, I think it was London actually to Blackburn, so five, five hours drive. And this fella's telling me, right, you, you're not getting signed here. There's no point. So I remember going into like the digs area going, this is a shambles. Like, what what have I flown over for, basically? And just, yeah, obviously then had a really good week training. Really enjoyed it. Stayed on for another week and then got signed. So turned out to be, yeah, the best decision ever and really enjoyed my time there. Yeah. Four years, I think it was in the end. Carabao Cup tie your way to Bradford City. Played the full 90 minutes. Mm. Was that 2019? At that stage, you're thinking, I remember the real shout mm. here, or were you still on the... That was this season. That yeah. was um, that was probably six, seven months ago. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was coming towards the end of my contract. Um, and yeah, obviously I played well in the game. And then, yeah, just really enjoyed the game and played well. And yeah, I was kind of thinking like, what if? But obviously again, like knowing, being around it, knowing, I mean, you need to probably have a few more games like that to, to do that, so... But yeah, I really enjoyed my time at Blackburn. Is it is it tough as a kid breaking through because you know that you you can just go out and sign, mm. you know, and and there's the old sort of cliche that, that, that some manager wary throwing young lads into it. Is that did you find that? Yeah, obviously, like you said, you've always got the when you're a young player, you've always got the more experienced players ahead of you, mm. um, and I think it is really hard to throw in a youngster if not needed. Do you know what I mean? So the take, I mean. Just when I look back at when I was 18, 19, 20, I had like Charlie Mulgrew, Daryl Lenahan. So they're players that have obviously played 300 games, two, 300 games. So to take one of their shirts is really tough. Mm. Um, but yeah, I suppose when you look back here, I'm not going to say I have regrets, but could you have done more? Could you do more? Maybe. But um, like I said before, like I have nothing but respect for the Blackburn. And yeah. um, obviously it was my first like professional deal is in apart from Lincoln Redimps. So the four years I had there, yeah, I was... I was buzzing when I signed and, you know, I was happy to almost leave and then come on to this journey here. Yeah. So, yeah. What made you come here? What was, what's, what, 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 and I asked this to Hayden, mm. I asked this to Johannes, you get a phone call saying, Dundalk, do you know, and you can be mm. honest, as, mm-hmm. do you know, if you, you get a phone call saying, Dundalk, League of Ireland, what's the first thing that comes in your head? Well, to be fair, I knew them from, like, we, we just spoke about the 2020 yeah. Europa League. I couldn't have told you the rest of the teams in the league, yeah. apart from maybe Rovers and maybe Bohemians as well. Um, but obviously, once I did my research and had a few phone calls with the gaffer, I had a few phone calls with Brian, um, just really appealed to me, really, mm. just um, to come out here and um, play games and obviously good level. Like, like while I've been out here now, I can see that obviously the level's really good and I feel like it's improving, yeah. you know, that's what the boys say as well. So, um, yeah. Have you been surprised by it? I asked this to all the new lads as well because I think there is a perception you come over here, eh, can't be that, can't be that tough. But it's Definitely. as you can see with the league table, it's a, it's so competitive. And... Definitely no, I like you said then I was almost shocked. Probably, obviously, I played in the league of Gibraltar, and there's not to be disrespectful, probably a few teams that you go into games thinking this is going to be yeah not a walk in the park, but an easy day at the office. While I think in this league, there's no. <laughs> You, everyone's respected, you know, um, and everyone everyone can win. Everyone, anyone can be anyone like we've seen already this season. So definitely shocked, definitely surprised. And I think the the levels of the teams are probably improving as well because the league's getting a lot more noticed. And yeah, uh, yeah it's tough. It's tough. And I think, but obviously now we've all come to grips with it and we're still moulding as a team because obviously we're a new, young team. Um, you know, and there's going to be hiccups, but I think we've reacted well from the few hiccups we've had already. And um, yeah, we're not far off it. Is that is that the is that the the sense now? The, the first round of fixtures are over. Mm. Played everybody. You sort of know now what it's about. You know mm. what to expect. Yeah. I think you can see now over the last five games we're we're starting to we're starting Building to grow something. now and yeah. starting to do you know what I mean? We're starting yeah. to motor properly now. No, yeah, we're starting to build something. Well, definitely. I think we all we all could see the vision at the beginning. We all knew it would take a little bit of time. We all yeah. knew there'd be 
some hiccups. And I think now, like you said, there, the last five games we've seen that that we're moulding, that we're starting to get the the style of play that the gaffer wants. And you know that will like, that still take time to mould. Like we're not naive enough to think that like we've what we've gone five unbeaten now. That's it. Like we know that there's still a lot more to do, mm-hmm. a lot more to give, and we've all got a lot more to give. So yeah, exciting, exciting, exciting times. I think. Yeah. The one sort of comparison I suppose you can make to the, the league in Gibraltar is it offers a route to Europe. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was something, obviously you mentioned Dundalk, you're aware of them from, mm-hmm. from the Europa League in 2020 and 2016, but we're in the Conference League qualifiers this summer. It's, it's, it's an opportunity you're not going to get in England unless you're in no. you know, the, 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 the Premier League. league. Yeah, exactly like you said there. So they're the experiences that we all, everyone wants to play in those games, don't they? Yeah. They're the games that you want to play in. So to have the opportunity to potentially play in a European game is obviously really special. So we've all got to take that as well and get ready for that because that's coming thick and fast like the games do here as well. So, yeah. Bruno's Magpies are on CD. We were looking at this before mm. from Gibraltar. Mm. Uh, is Europa, Europa FC, they're Europa. seeded in the mm. first round. So you might be maybe getting a trip back to Gibraltar in the yeah, little first flat, round. Yeah. Bruno's Magpies, some name, isn't it, for a team? It's good, yeah. Good club, good manager. Is that true? They were formed in a bar and then just sort of yeah. There is a there is a bar called Bruno's, and then I'm pretty sure yeah, it probably did come from. I think the owner of the. I'm not too sure. I don't want to say that, but I think that is how it comes. And then last three years they've been flying. To be fair, so yeah, it would be enjoyable to play against a team from Toronto. Yeah. Now we're going into Europe and mm. <clears throat> ninety say ninety over recent years we've seen lads from different countries and stuff, but. We're going into Europe in the summer, and that's not going to be anything new for you because you've thirty. Is it thirty-five cats for yeah. Gibraltar? Yeah. Like, so European football won't be anything new to you. You mentioned you've been through the levels. You were the first player to represent Gibraltar at every age group from under sixteen to senior level. That was on your Wikipedia page. Is that true? Mm, yeah, no, no. There yeah. we go. So that's that that's true. I seen that on Twitter. To be fair, yeah, yeah. Um, thirty-five yeah. caps is nothing to be not to be sniffed at. No, yeah, I'm proud every time. From the from the youth teams when I was fifteen and sixteen, and seventeen, I've always been proud to put the shirt on. I think it's probably yeah proudest part of my career so far mm. is probably representing Gibraltar. So for sure, how do you, how do you, how do you approach games? Because with no disrespect, you're one of mm. the, the the smaller countries. European football, I think, over the last couple of years has got a lot more competitive. But how do you approach Sagan in the? You've got France and Holland, and obviously you've. You've the Republic in the group, but you're going to play France and Holland. What do you think and mm. get into that camp? Obviously, we just we analyze opposition the same we would here. Mm. We analyze what they're good at. Obviously, when you're analyzing France and Holland, they're good at a lot of things. Yeah. So it's tough to analyze, but you obviously analyze how you plan to stop them. Listen, obviously, you can plan and analyze as much as you want, but when you've got players with individual quality like France, Holland, Ireland, sometimes. It's hard to stop it. It's nice seeing the throws in there. Louis. You appreciate that playing up to the crowd there. I like that. <laughs> uh, we'll see you in June. I won't yeah. be playing. <laughs> who's been the Who's been the toughest team you've played against? Probably Holland away. That was the, was that yeah. six? Was a six? Six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. Those when someone asks me about those games, is they honestly feel like a blur just because obviously they have the ball a lot of the time and you're you're chasing these players and. When you're on the pitch, you don't obviously think of them as a player that, mm. you know, but I was, I think I said it once in an interview after the game, but I was playing with Depay on FIFA before the game. <laughs> and then obviously you're playing him and you no respect given, yeah, like, yeah. You, you're straight on him. So, yeah, they're really tough games. Obviously, we approach every game the same, whether it's from someone maybe more towards our level or, or Holland, France, the analysis and everything to do with the game is looked at the same. We go to win. Obviously, it's very tough to, mm. to do that, but um, yeah, we approach every game the same. What's been the best moment with Gibraltar? We obviously, for for us, obviously, I think a lot of people don't like the Nations League, mm. um, but for us, it's like mm. that's like like what we obviously lick our lips for. Uh, we won Group D. Uh, we had four clean, sh- four or five clean sheets in a row um, in three months, I think it was, and then won Group D and went into Group C, which obviously for the nation, for the federation, that's obviously really good yeah. for us in the rankings. We went up a lot, so. Yeah, the last obviously three years of development with Gibraltar have been excellent, and I think we've gone up in the rankings. We've obviously gone up to Group C. We've done a lot of things that because we haven't been in UA for that long mm. um, compared to a lot of the other countries. I think it's only fifteen years. So, you know, to be where we are, we're already ahead of schedule. I'd say, and I say we've got a lot more to come. You played a lot of games in midfield for for, yeah. for your country, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can step in there when needed. I wouldn't say I'm a midfielder, but I'd say that 
yeah, obviously when um, when told to do it, I can do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Looking at the, the first two games, beating with Greece and Holland, but a tasty doubleheader coming up mm. in mm -hmm. next month. Next month. Next month. Mm. France and then the small matter of Ireland, <laughs> which is going to be, it's, it. please God, you're fit and included in the squad. It'd yeah, be, no, I hope be. It, it'd be a strange sort of thing playing yeah. playing the country that you're, you're you're playing in. Definitely, yeah. When when I played Ireland a few years ago, I wouldn't mm. have said I'd be yeah. here next time I play them in Ireland. So, yeah, no, I'll be looking forward to it. Hopefully, as you said, I'm back fit and raring to go for them. Yeah, the, the twice you played, the, the first game was the infamous game in Gibraltar just after... Mm. John Delaney stepped in as FAA CEO. There was more, I think it was more famous for what was happening off the pitch yeah. than, than the game itself. And then you played at the Aviva June 2019, 2-0. Uh, so it'd be nice to see you back as a Dundalk player at the Aviva yeah. in, on international duty. Yeah, no, I'm really excited. Obviously, the Aviva, as I said before, even before I came here, I used to say it's one of my favourite grounds that I've gone to just because the pitch was nice, the fans were good. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's not far from England. So obviously, a lot of my family would come over yeah. for that game. Um, so I know really excited hopefully as you said I'm there raring to go what do you uh, what do you think your chances are against Ireland now you can be 100% honest mm. now obviously Stephen's son Owen is in training with us as well and yeah. Stephen's the Stephen's yeah. the king the king of Orioles so you know you, yeah he told me he was uh, watching Gibraltar play the other day with his dad I was trying to say I'm just trying to keep my mouth shut right, okay. till, till June I'm not saying anything <laughs> Um, I just said, oh, all right. And he said, you play midfield? And I said, no, play left back. <laughs> <laughs> You're not giving uh, that? No way. <laughs> uh, no, as you said, yeah. Um, yeah, we approach it to win. Are they the games, though? Like, would, are they the games that like, you look at mm. sort of Greece and mm. Ireland and think, yeah, we might, might pick up. Obviously, France and Holland. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're tough games, yeah. Bonus territory if you get something. Yeah. But do you look at Ireland and think, yeah, that, that might be one? Uh yeah, I'd say so, yeah. I'd say when we lost 1-0 at home to Ireland, we were all in the change room after, absolutely mm. gutted, mm. because we felt like we were in the game and, and should have nicked something from the game. Even when we played in the Aviva, we lost 2-0 to an own goal and, and last-minute goal, I think it was 93rd mm. minutes. So again, we were in the change room, we were proud, but we were we were gutted that we didn't actually probably nick something, as you said, from a bigger nation than mm. Gibraltar. So um, yeah. Oh, yeah, we approached it in the same way. We want to win the game, so... Obviously, it's a very different squad from the one I played. So we've got a lot of an analysing to do because it would be pretty much a whole new 11 yeah. from, I think, the 2019 course, squad. Yeah. So, yeah, we go again, basically, to into it. Yeah. Well, so hopefully we see you there because that'll mm. mean you're obviously back and back in the pitch and back in the Dundalkshire. It's yeah. a busy period coming up. Is that, is. Is that a good thing as well? That, you Definitely. know, you, there's, there's games there for you to hopefully get back into before the, before the break? Yeah, the plan is it shouldn't be, hopefully, obviously... Bear in mind, any hiccup shouldn't be too long. Hopefully, you know, no time frame on it, but it shouldn't be longer than any, I think, more than three weeks, really. So, hopefully by June, I'm back fully fully fit and raring to go. The draw, I think, for the qualifiers, European quarters, 20 to June. June. Yeah, yeah so be buzzing coming, for that. Into, coming into a good time of the year. Yeah. Louis, thanks a million. Um, just before we go, do you want to, Give that question again. Give we're yeah. gonna give away one of our new third jerseys when it when it we we expect it'll be here at the start of June. Louis's got a question. He's gonna tease out again. Um, who did I score my one and only international goal against? And it was in Ireland. It was in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, we'll see in June. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your comments uh, in the comment section below we'll announce the winner next week Louis thanks for joining me um, Pleasure. it's great to see you back sort of on the road of recovery and I think we're all looking forward to seeing you back in the pitch yeah thank you for having me as well nice one thanks again to our main sponsors Bet Regal um, we'll be back again next week um, with another episode of Inside Oriel as I say tickets for Cork City are on sale now um, thanks again for tuning in nice one